something exciting is what this is. Well, guess what? By the shape, and based on my last video, maybe you can guess what it is. It's a record, but it's not just any record. It's a, actually an expensive record. I know I said I wouldn't be unboxing anything else, but maybe I just said record players. So we're unboxing a record. And I'm not just any record. Ripping it open with my bare hands. Maybe I'll use a scissor. Ah! Record player. Be old. You're still wondering, because I have an answer, what this record is. It's a good one. It's one that I was actually shocked my dad didn't have in his uh record collection because he was a huge fan I'm trying to do this for dramatic effect ah so excited I don't even know what it's gonna look like he was a huge fan of wow that was anticlimactic because that's not even the cover are you ready are you ready for this? Yeah, you're ready. You've been watching this whole time. Pink Floyd. Oh, it's beautiful. So this is one of my favorite Pink Floyd albums. Wish You Were Here. I only recently discovered this because I've always listened to one or two songs off the album. Like, Wish You Were Here, the song itself was always one of my favorites but I never listened to the whole album and I mean like of course I know shine on you crazy diamond there's the cover I never listened to it start to finish until recently and then I realized that this album has influenced a lot of other artists like uh, Paralyzer, like that opening. I don't have a guitar, I can't imitate it. That beginning line where the guitar does that arpeggio, one of my absolute favorite uh, composers for film scores is uh, Vangelis, specifically uh, the Blade Runner uh, soundtrack. And Blade Runner was made in, or it was released in 1982. Same year I was born, by the way. So this came out in 1975. And you know what? I was annoyed because I was like, you know, the whole intro part, uh, part one of Shine On You Crazy Diamond, it's basically Blade Runner. It's basically like Vangelis, I am quite sure ripped off Pink Floyd. And I even have a Vangelis record that I'm also going to listen to that I've never listened to before. A few things that I found out. Um, the Burning Man is apparently um, there was a lot of hostility in the music industry and a lot of bad feelings felt by the band towards the music industry and there was a saying that they didn't want to get burned by the music industry. So that's why it's two businessmen shaking hands and one is getting burned. The song, the song itself, not the picture, but the song entitled Wish You Were Here um, was about one of the founding members of Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett. And there was a lot of speculation as to why he quit. Uh, some people thought he had mental illness. Uh, I think like schizophrenia or something like that. 
um, his sister said that he and all his siblings were on the spectrum having Asperger's and uh, his band members were pretty sure it was uh, set off by a bad acid trip. So don't do drugs or else, even if you're Sid Barrett, founding member of one of the greatest bands ever, you know, you're not impervious. So this album came out in 1975 same year as Night at the Opera, which we're going to explore at a later date. I just think that that's really interesting and um, coincidental. I bought both of these albums at the same time. Side one, wish you were here. Shine on, you crazy diamond. Parts one through five and here we go. Well, it's gonna be the whole album. But... Yeah. So you missed it. Sorry. Uh, but we just listened to side one of Wish you, Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. It's amazing. I mean, I've heard the whole album front to back many times because it's one of my favorite Pink Floyd albums. But I never get tired of it. I never get tired of the sound of the Mini Moog synthesizer. Pretty amazing. Also, they just had recorded sounds on a cassette tape that they played. I just found out. I didn't know that. So we're gonna listen to side two. I never know if they, they're gonna say side A or side B or side one or side two. I don't know. So we're listening to side two now. Just finished side two and it's amazing it really is it's if you have like 45 minutes please listen to the album side one um you really need to listen to it from beginning to end can't stress that enough it's an experience you wouldn't want to listen to necessarily all nine parts back to back, but one through five should definitely be listened to together. And then six through nine, listen to together. It's a journey and it's an experience. And you know, why not? What else are you doing? They used uh, the organ quite a bit. Um, I believe it was a synthesized sound though. I don't think they had a Hammond organ on stage. Um, and then they had a saxophone by, um, who played the sax? Dick Perry was on saxophone. Amazing sounds. Amazing. Moving on. Welcome to the machine. Uh, the use of the mini Moog. I, I, I love a good synthesizer. It's, um, the manipulation and twisting of sound is just, you know, it's mad scientist. At its best I think that's that's in a nutshell what a Moog synthesizer is it or any synthesizer at this point um, it's you're being a mad scientist with sound waves and that's okay take that Queen so have a cigar it's uh, actually kind of a jab at the music industry again I had mentioned that that's what the cover is doing, saying, you know, kind of a commentary on how, um, I guess, bands were treated back then. Have a cigar, though. The intervals, and for those of you that don't, that are not musicians, intervals basically mean the distance between two notes. So, like, if I, if my keyboard's not on, but imagine. So, say this note, which consequently is C to F, that's one, two, three, four notes away. So the interval is a fourth. And notes can get much more interesting in terms of their distance and, you know, say something like that. Very interesting. Those, those intervals, they just, ah, it's just so good. Sorry, I get passionate about 
low end sounds. So good. I wish you were here. Um, something that I never noticed before, there is um, this sound that is a synthesized sound called an oscillator and it just kind of creates this reverberation like wow, 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 wow. Um, and that sound going from have a cigar into wish you were here is present, but you like with the record player on, like you can feel that vibration and it's, it becomes intense. It's really cool. What I never noticed before was how far into the song it actually goes because like, I was like, I had my hands on the table and I was like, it's still going. I didn't know it went that far into the song. One thing that I just wanna comment on about, and this is the last thing I'm gonna comment on about Pink Floyd. For today, can't lock me down. They are one of the few prestigious bands that really set themselves apart as being great because they knew how to convert emotion into sound and when you listen to say wish you were here you know i think people can kind of dismiss it as being um it sounds a little has a bit of a country twang to it but when you listen to it and you allow yourself to open up to feeling it every note not even the lyrics not even the vocalists the guitar player everything every note has intention and purpose and just it's just raw emotion and that is not something that they teach you very often uh nowadays at least um unless you go to a really good school for it for music but i don't know that's you know they they focus mostly on make sure you get all the notes right your tempo is right your pitch is right you know those are the things that really matter but you have to get past that and just emotionally be the music so that was my rant for today i hope you all enjoyed it i hope you're still watching subscribe to my youtube page please um because i enjoy having these talks <laughs>